acuerdo. Es cierto que la economía es una disciplina más amplia y que probablemente tenga una universalidad. Sin embargo, como usted también sabe, en los últimos años la psicología cognitiva mm -hmm. se ha incorporado mucho a la economía y eso ha generado este surgimiento de behavioral economics, que también tiene su vertiente en el derecho en esta idea de tal, de Sunstein, de behavioral economics. Mm -hmm. eh, eh, por lo menos en nuestro país eh, el asunto recién se está iniciando, no tenemos una posición dada y nos interesaría mucho saber cuál es su opinión sobre behavioral economics. Yeah. Well, behavioral economics uh, plays a big role now in law economics. For instance, uh, just to give you an example, in my former institute, uh, uh, we have now two positions, professorial positions of junior professors for behavioral law and economics. And we have also hired there a professor, Anne van Aken, who is uh, very much in this research. So it, as a matter of fact, this is very important. And if you look around in other countries, in the United States, but also in Israel, where law and economics is very uh, well established, uh, there are many scholars doing very interesting work in this field. So I think, and then of course we have also in Germany the Max Planck Institute in uh, Cologne, which is also doing a very important work in this field of uh, behavioral cognitive science. cognitive science. So that there is no doubt that this is of high importance just at the moment. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it attracts many researchers and many papers are written. Um, I think that uh, this work by Kahneman and Tversky is of very fundamental and very important, very great importance. Uh, I am not sure so far what it means for law and economics in the long run, um, whether it will completely change the discipline in the sense, for instance, that we stop working with the homo economicus and, uh, hmm. uh, and instead work uh, with psychology. I think that will not happen because uh, for a very simple reason, uh, economists, also lawyers, do not want to understand individual behavior, how you behave or how I behave. We must work with simplistic assumptions about human behavior to better understand how a rule works and how markets work and how markets in a monopolistic or oligopolistic or a monopolistic competition setting, uh, how markets work. And for that, uh, we are well advised to work with uh, these simplistic uh, decisions, which often uh, are lead us to a, a very good understanding of what's going on in the market and how the rule works. But uh, having said this, I still think that uh, the that um, this behavioral research will change the discipline to some extent, uh, and that we will have parts of the law and parts of the law, we will find that we do not get to good results with our simplistic assumption of homo economicus. And we have to um, then to work with more realistic uh, models of human behavior to understand problems better. And that is, I think that is better, especially in the case when people act quick, you know, act, think quick and so on, do not learn over time, uh, consumers might be. I think it will have a, a big impact in consumer protection, uh, but also in other fields. I'm not sure whether this, um, uh, what is now much discussed, nudging, uh, will be very successful or will should be successful. 
there's also a lot of critique that it, you know, that it distracts people when they make mistakes to learn from their mistakes because they, that is all corrected in a in kind of manipulative way. And there is also in Germany, especially uh, the uh, director of the Max Planck Institute in Berlin, Peter Ratzer, he is quite critical of this. But we have to see, this is at the uh, research frontier, and uh, we must see what comes out of it. But uh, uh, let me say that I, uh, I'm full of admiration for this uh, development and what they found out that was totally unexpected.